This documentary will look at the early Earth and how it formed, as well as the development of Earth's atmosphere and the subsequent dawn of life right up until the Cambrian explosion. The Earth we know today began as a tiny ball of dust and gas that formed after the Big Bang sent huge amounts of material into the early atmosphere. This tiny ball started off by circling the new sun at the centre of our galaxy in a massive cloud of solar material. Within this cloud, particles of mineral rock began to hit into each other and over time began to grow in size as more and more particles hit into each other and clumped across this known as accretion. As these bodies grew bigger, their gravitational pull increased, which helped them to grow in size. These clumping masses were known as planetismals, and one of these large clumping masses was the infant dirt, which grew to its present size in just 30 million years. As more and more material crashed into developing Earth, radioactive elements in the solar system were brought to the Earth. These elements, including uranium-238, thorium-232, and a very important isotope of aluminium, aluminium-26, acted to heat up the Earth over time, to the point where it became a completely molten mass. During this time, dense elements brought to the planet like nickel and iron began to sink towards the core due to Earth's gravitational pull, while lighter elements began to rise to the surface. The Earth was continuously being rained down upon by meteorites of all shapes and sizes in its early life. One of the biggest and most important of these meteorite impacts lent a hand in forming what we now know as the Moon. About 4.5 billion years ago, a small developing planet the size of Mars crashed into the Earth. This planet, known as Thea, sideswiped the Earth rather than came in head-on, which resulted in it being broken up as it lands the Earth. The debris from this impact began to orbit the Earth, much in the same way the Earth did when it was forming around the Sun, and the same clumping of material occurred to form our Moon. However, one of the main theories is that Jupiter and Saturn entered a unique alignment about 4 billion years ago that caused the orbits of many of the planets in the solar system to alter, causing what was known as a temporary state of chaos until the alignment was broken. As this period came to a close, a hypothesized origin of life may have been sparked 3.9 billion years ago. The Earth's first atmosphere appeared approximately 4.5 billion years ago, shortly after the formation of the Moon and Earth. Earth consisted of a blob of molten magma. From this magma, there was outgassing of hydrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, water vapour, helium, sulphur dioxide, hydrochloric acid and hydrogen sulphide due to the sun's radiation. Primitive Earth was devoid of oxygen. Approximately 3.9 billion years ago, Earth solidified to form the crust, the inner mantle, the outer mantle and the core. The hot molten inside of the Earth leaked out at weak places in the crust, creating volcanoes. Agassing of these volcanoes and the Earth's crust continued to release water vapour, ammonia and carbon dioxide, but still no oxygen present. The early atmosphere was likely to be dominant at first by water vapour. As the temperatures dropped, rain would have occurred and formed the oceans. This could have reduced global proportions of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The atmosphere was dominant by nitrogen, but there was still no oxygen. Life began having a major impact on the environment once photosynthesizing organisms evolved. These organisms, which consisted of blue-green algae, fed off the atmospheric carbon dioxide and started the production of oxygen. The organic molecules that form the basis for life, amino acids, have been discovered in asteroids. These are the building blocks for life, and one theory for the exact origin of life is the transport of amino acids to Earth via asteroids. Along with the presence of water, the basic ingredients needed for life was coming together. The Great Oxidation Event was a major environmental change in Earth's history. It was the appearance of oxygen 2.45 billion years ago. Early bacteria life, the cyanobacteria, introduced oxygen to the atmosphere. They are aquatic and photosynthetic bacteria and are the oldest known fossils dated more than 3 billion years ago and are still present today. Cyanobacteria occur in stromatolites and are one of the first colonizers of Earth. They produce oxygen via photosynthesis. Before the Great Oxidation event, cyanobacteria were producing oxygen that would have been removed quickly from the atmosphere by weathering of reduced minerals, notably iron. The iron was dissolved in the oceans and formed red-coloured iron oxide that settled to the sea floor and over time, distinctive sedimentary rocks called bands of iron formations were created. They were finely laminated deposits of iron oxide and carbonates. Bands of iron formations were widespread in the Arcane and were then largely absent after 2.45 billion years ago when oxygen was present in the atmosphere uh, because the iron oxide in the ocean was used up, iron oxide stopped being deposited and oxygen was capable to start building up in the atmosphere. Some scientists don't believe that it's just cyanobacteria that produce oxygen in the atmosphere. Dr. Jake Chivarowski, a lecturer from the National University of Galway, has a different theory on this. We have geological evidence of photosynthesis happening for hundreds of millions of years before the Great Oxidation events. Therefore, there must have been something specific and unique about 2.45 billion years ago. And in my opinion, the impact of massive volcanism um, hit the data. 
So his theory is saying that even though cyanobacteria were present over 3 billion years ago producing oxygen by photosynthesis, but that oxygen was not present in the atmosphere until suddenly during the Great Oxidation Event. So some other process must have triggered that accumulation. Tectonic shift caused underwater volcanoes to rise above the surface known as subaerial volcanism, which occurred 2.7 to 2.5 billion years ago. These volcanoes were now re releasing their magmatic volatile materials into the atmosphere at a lower pressure instead of being in the oceans. This pressure shift caused a change in the oxidation state of the sulphur in these gases, which increased sulphur dioxide. This would have caused an increase in the level of dissolution of sulphate in the oceans, which fed cyanobacteria, resulting in an increase in atmospheric oxygen. It been the combination of cyanobacteria and volcanism to create an oxygen-rich atmosphere. Before the Great Oxidation event, early Earth had an anoxic atmosphere that would have contained significant amounts of methane. This would have been warming the Earth. An increase in oxygen would have removed this methane and could have possibly triggered a cooling event generating a snowball Earth. Without water on Earth, life could not occur. Scientists suspect this water was transported to Earth in the form of ice via comets and asteroids. Such bodies could easily have delivered oceans worth of water to the Earth. During these impacts, water would also be evaporated into the atmosphere and fall onto the Earth in the form of rain. Volcanic emissions also added water to the atmosphere. The ingredients needed for life on Earth now occurred. A major step in the evolution of life was the leap from prokaryotic cells to the more complex eukaryotic cells. Almost all life we see today belongs to the domain eukaryota. Eukaryotic cells are more complex than prokaryotes and led to the formation of multicellularity, tissues and organs which led to complex life forms and diversity. How did a humble bacterium make this evolutionary leap from a simple prokaryotic cell to eukaryotic? The answer is symbiosis. For example, a free-living prokaryotic bacterium that was engulfed by another cell as food perhaps ended up staying internally in the other cell. It produced energy for the cell and in return the larger cell provided it with protection. This scenario continued and evolved which is thought to have produced eukaryotic cells. Simple single cell creatures had the planet to themselves for billions of years floating through the oceans. More than three billion years later cells began organizing themselves into tissues. Floating jelly-like mattress creatures filled the oceans. Certain tissues are responsible for locomotion, while others eating and digestion. New ways of cell communication occurred. These were the first animals on Earth and were a major success. 540 million years ago, the pace of animal evolution quickened. This is known as the Cambrian Explosion. During this time, animals evolved most of the basic body features we observe in modern species. Is life on Earth a planetary phenomenon, whereby when the right conditions persist, life will occur and evolve on any planet, or is it just a fluke? This is one major burning question that puzzles scientists. We will never be certain until life forms are discovered on other planets and prove that we in fact are not alone in the universe.